According to reports in today's papers, laughter can do as much good for your body as a jog in the park. Hoorah! Doctors claim that laughter is like internal jogging as it can lower blood pressure, reduce stress and boost the immune system. It's become a new fitness craze dubbed Laughter size. See what we did there. <laughs> laughter size. Are you up for giving it a go? <laughs> it's making me laugh just listening to you say that. Laughter size. What will they think of next? Actually, me and my husband thought about this years ago. I wish I patented it. If I'd known somebody was going to come along and make money out of it. Because we just found it, you know, we were laughing together one day and we found we were laughing at laughing, you know. Yeah. So now, if we get a bit fed up, we just go, ha 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 ha. See? <laughs> It just makes us laugh, it makes us crack up, and then if I'm very lucky, it might lead to another little kind of recreational exercise. You know? <laughs> and that, that does burn calories. Or scrabble. Well, they say men, men who make you laugh get you into bed quicker, Absolutely. don't they? Absolutely. Works they for me, are. love, yes. Oh, Somebody come and laugh with Sherry, know, quick. Yeah. <laughs> Can you laugh at me, please? Yes, quick. Does Ray make you laugh? He does make me... Oh God, he really makes me laugh, actually. Not intentionally, half the time, but he does make me laugh. <laughs> um, he makes me laugh because he's the easiest person in the world to make laugh. I mean, he laughs hysterically. Right. So, you know, I can watch comedy shows or sitcoms or whatever, and I go, oh, that's really funny, but I don't actually go forward with laughter. Yeah. But I love sitting next to Ray yeah. because... The tears the drip off. I mean, he really, really finds things funny. Actually, there's nothing nicer than sitting watching a film or something with oh. a real giggler. To be it honest with you, there's, there's absolutely nothing better than well, laughter. Well, laughter is infectious, isn't it? They yeah, do say yeah. it's well, I don't think, you know, I'd have to laugh every day for the rest of my life to lose this stomach. So I don't... <laughs> I'm not sure it's going to work in that way. That's no laughing matter, That's Kalinda. no laughing matter. <laughs> Do you ever wake up in the middle of the night laughing? No. No, sorry. <laughs> Yes, I feel sorry for her. I do. I yes, I, I do. do. <laughs> I don't know. It's a bit, well, I'm Billy No Mate, so somebody has to laugh. Um, <laughs> no, the thing is, when, I, when I'm feeling down, I wake up in the morning, and, I, and somebody said to me, when you wake up and you feel, oh, smiles, I... Uh, yeah, so honestly, it does change it because you, when you're walking along like this, you go, don't know what to try to do. It's got facelift, don't yeah. yeah. So it is good to do that, but my little Oliver makes me laugh more than anybody. My mm. little grandson, who's only three, and his giggle, you know, when you see those babies on television oh, giggle, yeah. Yeah. It's, isn't it the most infectious thing when somebody <laughs>, laughs like that, particularly little three year old? Yeah. You can't help it, can you? Yeah, feel happy. And all right. Us laugh. All the time. Do I? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That because you know I kind of I just say things. I like, why are people laughing at me? That's <laughs> strange because I'm so normal, more than normal. Aren't I, really? That's why. That's why we love you. No, I have. Oh. I'm a great one for cutting out. You know, if you see a, a little saying or something in a magazine or or whatever. My sister bought me one of these um, calendars. It's a desk thing that you rip off one a day. Yeah. It's got quotes. I've got quotes stuck all over my dressing table mirror. And uh, there's one I've got that it says, uh, "If you can laugh at it, you can deal with it." And I think that's a, oh. a good way to sort of think about things that are getting you wrong. If you can find a way of, you know, laughing mm. about it, you can work your way through well, it. Well, I tell you what, the thing that makes me laugh the most is when you're not meant to laugh. Always! Yeah. Things are always funnier there when is, you're in oh, assembly or yeah, at a meeting. that's or... serious. And it used to happen all the time with me and my sisters in um, the recording studio because we, you know, there'd be four of us there around one mic. Not oh. good, anyway. And um, Maureen is the biggest giggler in our family and cannot control it. So if she goes... Forget it. She, you're not going to get anything out of her for at least an hour, apart from <laughs> tears dripping off her chin. <laughs> and um, it used to happen all the time. But the worst thing was, it's normally when we were under pressure to get something finished, for yeah. instance. So, of course, one of us would go, hmm, which, of course, would <laughs> set the other three off. Yeah. Maureen would slide down the wall. <laughs> and then we'd look through the glass at the producer and they'd be like that. No. Which, of course, is the worst thing you can do. It's like being at school and they go, stop laughing. I know. And the more they say that, the more you oh, laugh. Oh, it's terrible, that, though, isn't it's it? It's brilliant. Uh, don't you find if, if you're on stage, though, and things happen, and, and you know you're not supposed to laugh, like you say, because, you know, there's thousands of people there watching you, and, and if something happens and, and, and just starts everybody off... I can remember I was in an opera once, um, and I had this uh, song I had to do. It was a duet with uh, the Countess. I was playing Susanna. It was in the Madre Figaro by Mozart. And she was dictating to me, and it was a really serious duet because she was talking about her husband 
who, you know, was leaving her. And so I was taking dictation. And I just noticed she'd stepped away from the table, stepped away from the table. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I wonder what's going on. And I glanced up and they'd lowered, they were lowering this massive great operatic chandelier. Don't ask me why. They were lowering it down onto the table at which I was sitting. So one minute I'm writing and the next minute I'm... <laughs> <laughs> kept on singing, nobody's going to stop me singing. <laughs> anyway, eventually, the dementia stage manager was heard <laughs> saying, Get the chandelier off the soprano! You know, and they raised the chandelier. <laughs> and I sat there, and we kept this gag going through the rest of the whole opera. Every time I came on stage, I went... <laughs> <laughs> so now, my saying is, don't work with animals or, what chandeliers. is it, children or, or chandeliers. chandeliers. <laughs> yeah. And the one thing I do remember is, uh, I was playing a fairy in, in a pantomime, and at the end of it, I had to go on and do, do the end thing, and there were stools, and the children were coming up, and I was to demonstrate what they were supposed to do. So I sat on the stool, and unbeknownst to me, somebody had tied a balloon to the front of it. So I'm sat there, so this, there's a little balloon, and, this, and I had to jump up and down on the stool to show the children what to do. And as I jumped up and down like this, the balloon from my legs got bigger and bigger <laughs> and bigger and bigger and bigger, and the whole audience were on the floor. <laughs> screaming that I had no idea because I hadn't guessed what was happening underneath me. <laughs> and everybody was standing on the floor and eventually I looked down and I fell off my stool and I couldn't get it. <laughs> 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 okay, time for a short break for us to pull ourselves.